Hi, today we're going to talk about what is a mineral. Now, we spent all this time talking about atoms and ions and packing, but how do they actually go together to make a mineral? So, for example, why is this a mineral? Uh, what is it that makes this a mineral? What is it that makes this, this light-colored stuff a mineral, this gray stuff a mineral, and, and so on? Okay. So what I really want to do here is there's only one thing in our lecture outline. It is how to define a mineral. And so by the end of this lecture, I hope students will be able to identify differences between minerals and non-minerals, and then to distinguish between minerals and non-minerals when given examples. So there are five components to the definition of a mineral. It has to be naturally occurring, homogeneous, solid, with an ordered atomic arrangement, and a definite, but it doesn't have to be fixed chemical composition. It can be a fixed chemical composition, but it doesn't have to be. It has to be definite, and is generally formed by an inorganic process. So let's go through this step by step. First, naturally occurring. The most common example of something that is not a mineral are synthetic crystals. So here's an example. This is cubic zirconia. It's made synthetically. Here is a naturally occurring diamond. There are, of course, synthetic diamonds. Those are not considered minerals because they're created by people. It has to be a homogeneous solids, solid. So in solids, elements and ions occur in a rigid structure. And that's not true for liquids and gases. So in general, the homogeneous solid component excludes liquids and gases. It also excludes solids that are not homogeneous. For example, a rock that consists of many different crystals is not homogeneous. As you move across the rock from one part of the rock to another, it changes composition and crystal structure, so it's not considered homogeneous. There is an exception of mercury as a liquid if it occurs naturally, and that's just for historical reasons. A mineral has to have an ordered atomic arrangement, so this is very important. Minerals consist of regularly repeated three-dimensional patterns of atoms or ions that are held together by chemical bonds. What that means is that the structure of minerals is not random. They crystallize in a geometric pattern, and that geometric pattern is repeated. So what does that exclude? It excludes glass. Glass doesn't have a repeated three-dimensional pattern of atoms or ions. And this is just an example. Here's the crystal zircon. Zircon is a mineral. It consists of silica tetrahedra. Here are the tetrahedra in this Vesta image. They are regularly arranged. The red dots here are oxygens. And the zirconium sit in these large green sites in a regular arrangement of atoms. So quick question, what is the softest mineral you know of? The softest one I can think of is talc. Talc has an ordered atomic arrangement. So here's an example here of talc. Again, this is from a Vesta image. Silica tetrahedral sheets. This is a whole sheet of silica tetrahedra all connected at the corners. This is an octahedral sheet. This is magnesium octahedra all connected at the corners, also connected to the silica tetrahedra. And here is another sheet of silica tetrahedra, a tetrahedral octahedral tetrahedral sheet. This underlying structure is what gives talc its thin and flexible characteristic. Next component, for me, this is the more difficult component to understand in the definition of a mineral. Each mineral has a specific chemical composition, but definite means that minerals do not have to have a fixed chemical composition. They have fixed ratios of cations to anions within an overall structure. So for example, we can consider forsterite. Forsterite is fixed composition, Mg2SiO4. It has a fixed ratio of cations to anions in this structure. Phthalite has a fixed composition, Fe2SiO4, same fixed ratio because it's actually the same fixed structure. These two end members are considered minerals. But there's also the mineral olivine, and olivine has a variable composition, but variable only within specific limits. 
So here, if you see this kind of notation, this means that there is a crystallographic site, fixed site in the crystal that can have either iron or magnesium or some mixture of both. These ratios of the cations on this site, the cation on this site, and the anions are all fixed. They're all fixed by the structure that's in there. So we have the mineral forsterite, fixed composition, thaolite, fixed composition, and the mineral olivine, which has a mixed composition, variable composition, but it's variable within a specific limited range that is limited by the crystallographic sites that mixing occurs on. There are alternate ways to think about chemistry. I tend to think of olivine as FEMG2 SiO4 because silicon always co coordinates with four oxygens and makes this silicon tetrahedron. So the iron and magnesium, they go in these octahedral sites. The point of th this variable composition means that you can mix and match them across all of these different sites. It's random mixing of these two elements. Now, you can consider that as a solid solution. This is the term that we use for this. And what a solid solution means is that there is some random mixing of two or more elements into a particular site. And so that's what we're talking about here. In the octahedral site, iron and magnesium can mix randomly. Now, there can be more than one site of mixing. And this is one of the things that makes solid solutions kind of complicated. Garnet has two different sites where mixing commonly occurs. There's a larger cubic site and there's a smaller octahedral site. And these can take different cations. So this is a solid solution among these components. And it can also take solid solution random mixing among these two components. The last component to the definition of a mineral is that it is generally formed by inorganic processes. So bones, teeth, which we make, little foraminiferal shells, corals, these have minerals in them. The minerals structurally and chemically are just like the same minerals that you can find formed by inorganic processes, not by biological processes. This mineral is apatite, this is calcite, this is a high magnesium calcite. Alternatively, some people refer to these as biominerals to distinguish them from inorganically precipitated crystals. So quick check here. When can water be considered a mineral? And the answer is only in its frozen state. Why is that? In its gas and liquid state, it may be homogeneous, but it's not a solid. Here's another one, can of Coke. How many criteria does it fail? My view is that it fails all five criteria. It's not naturally occurring. It's not homogeneous. The liquid inside is not solid either. The can has an ordered atomic arrangement, but the liquid does not. It does not have a definite chemical composition. The composition changes as you go from the can into the liquid, and it's not formed by an inorganic process. So now here's an interesting question. None of these are minerals. So just looking at the images, can you identify which material dissatisfies which property? And before you invest too much time in all of this, I'll say probably not. I identification requires an evaluation. So you need a hand sample or a thin section to really evaluate if something is or is not a mineral. But if you want to know why these materials are not minerals, this particular variety of quartz is created synthetically. If it occurs naturally, I'm not aware of it. Mercury here, it, it is technically a, a mineral, but when you look at this image, it's not just this material. Mercury, there's a lot of other stuff in here too. It's not a homogeneous material. Sea glass, okay, this is the glass that you pick up on the beach and has that kind of frosted surface to it. Glass doesn't have a regular atomic arrangement. Amber is organic. 
And this particular feldspar is an, is an intergrowth of sodium feldspar, that's the white stuff, and potassium feldspar, which is this green stuff. And so it's not a definite composition. It's two different crystals, two different minerals that are grown together. So now at the end of this, I hope you're able to list the different criteria that go into defining a mineral, that's these down here, and then to provide an example or two of a material that might fail each criterion with an explanation for why it fails that criterion.